we believe this is a multilateral deal. Uh, it's not a bilateral deal between Iran and the United States, but, but the United States needs to also understand uh, that uh, the international community believes that it's a deal that has been successful. It has achieved uh, what it set out to achieve. When he spoke to the New York Times, Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif was wrapping up a trip to the United States at a time when relations with America have been in a state of major limbo. President Donald Trump regularly bashes the nuclear deal forged by the Obama administration and other world powers in 2015. It was a terrible agreement. It shouldn't have been signed. It shouldn't have been negotiated the way it was negotiated. I'm all for agreements, but that was a bad one. Iran has been in compliance with the restrictions on its nuclear development. But Zarif argues that the U.S. hasn't been fully holding up its end of the bargain to normalize economic relations. At the G20 meeting in early July, the U.S. said it was encouraging countries to avoid doing business with Iran. Uh, I believe the United States is uh, showing minimal uh, compliance with the JCPOA, uh, but, but certainly the United States, particularly after the new administration, has not taken the necessary measures in order to be in full compliance. For Iran, the economic stakes of keeping the agreement in place are high. The benefits of the nuclear deal have been slow to come to the country. Boeing announced a $6 billion deal in April with Iran's Asimov Airlines that they said would create 18,000 American jobs. This marked the first big business deal by an American company with Iran under the Trump administration. Trade between Iran and the European Union has increased as well. Last year, Iranian exports to Europe grew by nearly 345 percent compared to the year before. This was largely driven by restarting oil shipments from Iran. But while many sanctions were lifted under the nuclear agreement, those remaining are still discouraging European banks from providing desperately needed financing for business deals and infrastructure projects in Iran. And the U.S. has imposed its own new sanctions on companies it says are linked to terrorist activities. President Hassan Rouhani's government in Iran sold the nuclear deal as something that would revive Iran's stalled economy, and he recently won a new term. But the country's slow recovery was a popular way for hardliners to criticize him during the recent presidential campaign. Iranian Foreign Minister Zarif says it will take some time for the average Iranian to feel the economic benefits, and it needs a firm commitment from the United States to engage in trade. But at the same time, it takes some political will on the part of the United States to live up to its commitments under the deal. I believe it is important for everybody to try to implement it in good faith, and I believe at the end of the day it would be in the interest of everybody that the Iranian uh, population would see the benefits, uh, the economic dividends of uh, implementing this deal. For its part, the European Union signaled it will continue its commitments to Iran under the nuclear deal, despite the uncertain future of the United States' active partnership. The deal with Iran belongs to all those that are more secure thanks to its full implementation. It belongs to the entire international community, to the entire global population. But given the economic power of American businesses, if the United States were to back out of its commitment to help normalize trade and economic ties with Iran under the nuclear deal, this would be a huge loss for Iran. The U.S. needs to make up its mind whether it wants to continue benefiting from uh, the extremely positive outcomes of this uh, agreement for all concerned. Of course, nobody got everything they wanted to. That's the name of the game. That's what a bargain means. And I believe everybody should be happy with the bargain. Otherwise, it would be a totally different story.